Hello, this is Axel Paxel, um, back with a new video on the Dung Beetle Knight. Today we will be painting the wings on the Dung Beetle Knight. And this uh, includes some freehand pattern that you just saw there on the top right corner. Okay, so going right to the palette cam. Oh, I should actually say first that um, I made a new Patreon uh, account. It is it is brand new. I have no <laughs> supporters, and uh, I'm not ashamed to say that because I'm. A, it's a brand new page. Uh, for the first ten uh, Patreon supporters um, that support me with one dollar, uh, you will get your name. Uh, at the end of every uh, video I make forever like permanently you, your name will always be a part of the ending of the uh, of all the YouTube uh, tutorials that I do as a thank you and uh, that's an honorable mention um, and uh, you will also get other uh, benefits uh, you get to see my tutorials uh, one week before they uh, air on uh, youtube so uh, yeah you should definitely check that out if you if you want to support me that is um, it's only one dollar uh, it won't stay that uh, that way for forever but um, uh, I need uh, I need to start my page so uh, and that's a great way for you to uh, support me if you if you can. Okay, so going back to the palette uh, cam here, um, the colors that you see uh, is Mephiston red. It's a layer paint from uh, from uh, uh, Games Workshop. And that's mixed with uh, Prima Krill Titanium one White from Schminke. That's uh, just, um, you can just use a regular white, any white will do. As long as you mix white with red, you will get a pink. And the color you actually want to go for in the beginning here is, uh, I call it uh, Piggy Pink. It, it looks awful by itself, uh, it looks really terrible, so once I apply this paint, you will think, what the hell is this? But um, <clears throat> it will all start to come together when I add the, um, uh, the other layers to the, to the paint, especially with the freehand in, uh, in the end. <coughs> so yeah, here I'm just applying the uh, applying the paint. Um, I should mention then that the consistency of this paint is uh, is not like a heavy base coat uh, consistency, uh, base color consistency. It's more it's more on the light base consistency perhaps um, yeah, I have to go over the same spots maybe twice or thrice um, in order to cover the the area smoothly uh, but it doesn't matter that much for for uh, it doesn't need to be perfectly smooth uh, at this step because you're going to go over it with um, with uh, layers. God, it looks awful. <laughs> but when I painted this, I was I was painting it like this, and I was uh, thinking to myself, um, "What the hell am I doing? This looks terrible." But uh, if it if it, it's something that painting has uh, taught me, is it is that. Uh, how you get there doesn't matter as long as you keep focusing on the same parts uh, it will most often uh, look good if you keep working on that same uh, on that same thing but I must admit that painting uh, these wings I I felt the urge rather strong to just paint over with a different uh, with different colors, maybe uh, green actually was my was my thought, but yeah. Um.
so here you can just see that I'm going over the same over the same spots uh, multiple times uh, in over in order to get a, a smooth uh, transition uh, no not transition but a smooth color for the base <coughs> I'm sorry I've caught a cold so if my voice is a little bit like cracking up it's that's because um, because of that Uh, the brush that I'm using right now is a uh, Windsor uh, and Newton Series 7 rounded tip uh, size, I think that's a double zero. I have four uh, brushes that I, uh, or five, or f six if you count uh, mixing uh, the dirty old uh, <laughs> mixing brush, but four that I uh, actually use to uh, apply most of my paints with. And um, those are all Windsor uh, Newton uh, brushes. I like them because they have a very fine tip, but uh, actually the other brushes that I have now uh, have lost their tip. They will evidently, or I mean, always lose their tip uh, if you paint with uh, if you paint with the same brushes over a long duration of time. But uh, if you if you take good care of your brushes, um, like wash your brush in water after every paint session and uh, and not paint or not do any techniques like dry brushing on the on the brushes that you want a fine tip on, that will completely wreck it wreck your uh, brushes but as, as long as you keep your um, brushes uh, um, or take good care of them they will uh, last a while but this is actually the only uh, brush that I still have that still has its uh, its uh, tip uh, this and uh, perhaps the my triple zero <clears throat> Okay, so here I've uh, I've um, added some water to the Mephiston Red, actually quite a lot. I think it's on a ratio of uh, two parts water, one part paint, and uh, I apply it uh, by moving the brush. Uh, from where I, where I want the transition to begin to the recesses of the of the part that I'm painting and that is because you always leave uh, more paint in the recesses or where the brush leaves the model is where you uh, leave the most paint and if you if you did it in the other uh, direction you would leave more paint where you want the transition to be so it wouldn't blend that well with the piggy pink in this case. Uh, so here I'm just uh, applying uh, more more of that color to the to the to the to the layer. I'm actually you can't see this but I'm actually also licking my brush. So first I apply uh, the paint from the from the brush after having uh, wiped some of it off on my on my uh, finger. I apply it and then I lick my brush and go over the transition between the piggy pink and the uh, and the red. And this will uh, create uh, a softer blend between the colors because when you lick the brush, you add a small amount of water to the brush. Uh, <clears throat> Uh, which will uh, which will make the transition like uh, smoother and you won't get those uh, brush uh, brush marks so here you can see that the transition is, is coming along I mean overall it still looks bloody terrible but <laughs> uh, transition wise between the red and the pink it's it's getting there uh, the wing still looks like crap but uh, it will uh, it will look better 
so here I'm adding some more water to the um, lighter uh, lighter parts of the of the wing. Um, this is uh, this is more white than the piggy pink. I've added more water or and more white to this mix. So this is uh, this is more this has more water, perhaps on a ratio of I would say two parts water, one part paint, perhaps. Um, and here you can see that I do the same. Uh, I paint in the direction where I want a paint to be left on the model. I I want it to be left along the edge on the brush, no, on the model. So I paint in that direction. If I were to do it the other way around, the transition would be too jarring between the white and the pink, piggy pink. I mean, <clears throat> um, yeah. <clears throat> So it's starting to <clears throat> it's starting to get there. You can see that it it has uh, quite a bit of contrast uh, compared to the uh, parts of the wing on the left side that are unpainted. And as I keep going over the same spots with uh, with a very thin paint, it it will gradually build up and become lighter along the edges. So that's what I'm trying to achieve. I want the lightest part to be on the edge of the of both sides of the wings. <coughs> okay, so here uh, is a cut. I had to cut out parts of the video because part of the video was out of um, out of uh, uh, camera angle. Um, so in, uh, instead of actually having parts of the video that were like obscured from <laughs> from view, I, I decided to cut that portion out. Don't worry, uh, I have included bits where I do the freehand uh, blood uh, veins, uh, so you will get to see that on on the on the other uh, small uh, parts of the of the wing here. So here I'm uh, I'm doing the same uh, that I did with the first part. I'm adding. Uh, Mephiston red mixed with water uh, on a ratio of two parts water, one part Mephiston red, and um, yeah, and I, I I pull the brush in the direction of where I want the most paint to be left, like uh, like I explained before. Again, pardon my my voice. Uh, <laughs> I don't sound like this normally, but uh, I've caught a cold, so uh, yeah. Hopefully, you can uh, live through it. <clears throat> uh, what I did there was just going over the with some piggy pink because uh, some of the some of the black was coming shining through uh, the paint, and I didn't want that because once you apply the um the other layers it becomes in increasingly harder to uh, fill in those spots so you better uh cover it completely before you um uh, <clears throat> so, so that you don't have to go over it uh, afterwards you could do it but it's more work and who wants that so just fill it in nice and uh smooth the first time around <clears throat> you can actually see how uh, the paint is like going uh, on the model as I apply it. You can see how thin it is. If it were uh, um, like a thick base, it would um, look entirely different. It's very thin and I'm not careful about how or where actually I apply it because I haven't painted other parts of the wing yet. So I will go over those later. <coughs> Sorry.
yeah, I decided that um, while I still had the mix for the for the piggy pink <laughs> fresh on the palette, I decided to just go over uh, the the left side on the uh, the left wing as well, so I didn't have to mix that color uh, again. I probably have to anyway, but uh, yeah, that that was my thinking process while I was painting uh, this wing as well. <clears throat> and it's actually kind of cool because uh, you get to see the contrast between the finished wing uh, on the right and the piggy and the piggy pink left wing. Um, and I must say that uh, they do not compare um in terms of uh how how they look um the right wing looking a lot better um uh, at least that's what i hope that everyone else will will uh, think as well <laughs> piggy pink is not uh, a paint in the uh, games workshop uh, library so um um, but I, I think they probably have some similar looking paints. Uh, that's just what I call it because the first thing I <laughs> thought of, uh, thought about was uh, oink oink, uh, piggy pink. Yeah. So. <clears throat> so here I'm adding the. Uh, um, the lighter um, pink color it looks actually completely white on uh, on when applied on the model but if you look at the uh, wet palette you can see that it's actually uh, way more saturated uh, on the pink side compared to the prima krill uh, uh, schminke that's uh, on top of it or directly above it and when you saw you, you actually saw the consistency of the paint. Uh, I left a mark on my uh, finger uh, there and it was um, you, that's a nice way to see um, to check for the uh, consistency of the paint before you apply it. If you were to apply it to thick hair, uh, meaning that you have added to small amounts of water, it would um, it would not look good because uh, it would... Um, it would n it would not blend very well with the uh, the transition would be too jarring and it would not look like smooth at all, so you need to work with uh, thin uh, paints. So this is actually a great exercise for you if you uh, if you normally don't paint like this, thin your paints. Um, learn to work with uh, with a thinner uh, consistency. It's way more uh, rewarding and um, yeah I just like how uh, how uh, you can actually manipulate the look on on models um, by doing this <coughs> so the wing is actually starting to resemble something good uh, now I still have the lower portion of the wing that I have not uh, painted uh, uh, with um, uh, yeah where I where I haven't painted it in the uh, layered uh, Mephiston red or the um, lighter version of the piggy pink. <clears throat> This is actually a good example of uh, of not needing like the whole library of uh, Games Workshop or uh, Vallejo or whatever brand you you prefer. You don't need to buy that many paints. You can always mix uh, colors together in order to create your own unique uh, your your unique uh, color. So you don't have to invest like a lot to to learn how to paint. I've seen people like hoarding, like, I swear, like a couple of hundred box, uh, boxes of, of paint. And um, uh, yeah, 
I, I just don't see the see the point uh, in in having that many. <laughs> hmm. That's just me, but it doesn't hurt having a lot of paints, but you certainly don't need it. Oh, what I would invest in were uh, a couple of good brushes because uh, having a fine tip uh, on a sable uh, uh, hair brush uh, makes, uh, makes uh, a big difference. So this is when I, after I go over it like once or twice, you can actually see how much, um, uh, the other parts of the wing are much lighter. And that's because I've gone over the same areas, like maybe six or seven times uh, as I'm working on doing here. <clears throat> and you have to do that in order to, to build up the, uh, layers of uh, of the uh, of white color Uh, when you when you zoom in on the model like a lot, you can still see some small brush marks where the transitions uh, are, but um, <clears throat> uh, that's that's completely fine to be honest because you're never gonna gonna look at the model and uh, through a, like a, a microscope and and see that stuff. So if you take a picture and you actually zoom in. You can see all the flaws uh, um, that are on there, and I know they are on there. But um, uh, yeah, fixing like the most minuscule uh, error um, is not really necessary because they are going to be uh, blind to the naked eye. Okay, so here I'm applying the. Um, uh, the uh, freehand uh, veins pattern and you can see how I move my my uh, brush uh, it's like slightly of a uncontrolled movement like I just wiggle the wiggle the brush because you you actually want those curvy uh, lines for for veins and you don't want them to look exactly the same so if you if you train yourself to paint like the same vein on on every part of the of the wing it will look very um, it would not look uh, natural at all so you just have to like wiggle and so that so that the the veins uh appear uh more uh happen like like they happen to be there at random like not someone like drew them on there with a computer or something <laughs> yeah, I, I hope that made sense uh the color of this paint is actually the same color as uh as i did the um uh, the first part of the scales uh it's basically a flat red from Vallejo and a bit of uh, model color black. Um, yeah. And um, interesting as well, you can see that the veins are uh, bigger in some areas and smaller in others and that's that happens if you apply different amounts of pressure on the on the brush uh, on the model <coughs> you want that to happen because when you look at veins they they 
tend to be larger in some places and uh, smaller in others. So uh, that's that helps with the realistic uh, look that yeah, that you you're going for. Uh, so here I'm uh, applying some. Uh, I think it's. I think it's flat red from Vallejo. Uh, I have a lot of paints on the palette now, um, so I'm sorry about that. But um, I think it's flat red from Vallejo. Uh, and what I'm doing is that I'm applying some tonal differences to the um, to the veins themselves. So by making some parts more red uh, than other parts um, it will uh, enhance the look of the veins in total because all veins have uh, different um, color properties based on how thick they are based on how protruding they are from the skin or in this case uh, the wing so adding color uh, variance i guess you can say to the to the veins there's always a possibility that you're when you do this you have to be very careful because you can go over uh, the spots um, making it thicker as long as you don't paint like all over the place and you like smudge paint on there um, it's it's no problem actually but yeah Try to be as precise as you can. So going through the thinking process, I think I was uh, like I was doing here where I just look at the model and I'm not applying any paint at all I'm actually thinking of where I want the lines or if I want more lines uh, of blood if you add too much it can overwhelm uh, be overwhelming so finding a good balance uh, is uh, uh, preferable so here I'm mixing in um, a lighter uh, pink uh, which I'm going to use for the underside of the um, the veins uh, this will help uh, make the veins look more uh, three-dimensional as if they were uh, protruding a little bit from the uh, wing itself this, this face is also like optional if you're happy with the look as it as it is here uh, you can leave it like that but adding this small uh, like lines under uh, the uh, um, the the veins will really make them like a pop a little bit more so Be sure that you also have this, uh, <clears throat> uh, I guess you could call it a highlight color, uh, to a consistency where it's not too thick, because if it is, it will look too jarring and it will not mesh well with the, uh, the blood veins uh, themselves. It will look too weird. So this is starting to look like the 
wing that uh, was on the picture uh, in the beginning of the video. Not much is left now, I'm just going over some small details and I'm actually doing um, Yeah, I should mention that actually. Right now, I'm I'm uh, showing you the brush. You need a very fine, very fine tip for for this work because I'm going to add some really small uh, blood lines with um, uh, Mephisto uh, uh, red. I'm actually using. Um, I, I called it a layer color. Uh, it, it has that same property, I guess, because it has more water than a base, but it's actually from the model air range. Um, I think that means that it's a little bit uh, uh, more on the watery side. So I'm, I'm actually painting this... Um, straight out of the uh, bucket. Going very, very carefully here, I have to... Uh, I have to be very careful with how I apply this because if I push the brush down too hard, I will uh, leave um, a, a stronger line than, than I uh, want. And if I were to do that now, uh, it's harder to go back because I'm painting over uh, the layers that I've already put down. So. Uh, getting this right on the first go is preferable. If you're if you if you don't, then it's it's no problem. It will still look good. But uh, if you make mistakes, uh, maybe it's better to regard them as happy little accidents <laughs> that will enhance the unique look of the of the wing rather than uh, try to uh, uh, correct it. All right, so it's coming uh, near the end of the video now, actually. If you enjoyed the, the video and if you stayed until the uh, end, um, thank you so much. It would mean a lot uh, to me if you uh, subscribed and uh, liked the video. And if you really want to support me making these uh, videos and teaching you how to, to paint at a, at a higher level like this, uh, I will continue to put up movie, uh, video tutorials and you could also support me on Patreon. Uh, right now the maximum pledge is for $1. It's just to get my page uh, going and uh, you uh, get your name uh, eternally written in all my future videos as a thank you, honorable, honorable mention at the end of my um, all my, uh, my videos. Thank you so much for, uh, for watching and um, yeah, see you on the next video.